Okay, uh, this is the lecture two of uh, geographic applications of remote sensing. And we're going to talk about uh, remote sensing basics. So this is actually the first chapter of the course because lecture one was about the introduction, right, of the course, okay? So today uh, you can consider this as, as remote sensing class 101, remote sensing basics. So specifically, uh, one second, we're going to talk about these topics or you can say these aspects of remote sensing as a whole, okay? First, electromagnetic radiation principles, okay? Or EMR principles, okay? Secondly, remote sensing data collection and then remote sensing data models. How do we store uh, remote sensing images? Remote sensing platforms, right? Uh, we have um, on the ground remote sensing platform, um, airborne remote sensing platforms. We also have satellites, remote sensing platforms, which means um, out of atmosphere platforms, okay? And different remote sensing models. And we're also going to discuss a little bit about um, remote sensors characteristics, okay? Let's start with the very foundation of remote sensing, which is EMR, electromagnetic radiation, okay? So in remote sensing, especially in uh, passive remote sensing, sun is a, is a source of energy. So let's just use Let's just assume sun is a, 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 is a, is an energy source here, okay? Which means we are talking about passive remote sensing. We use the energy from the sun as the energy of um, of, of 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 the not the sensor, uh, <laughs> the energy of the remote sensing process. If we are talking about active remote sensing. It means that um, sun is not the, the the energy source. Sensors themselves, they are energy sources, okay? So yeah, um, that's another story, uh, passive remote sensing and active remote sensing. Now let's talk about passive remote sensing and uh, sun is energy source. So energy from the sun undergoes fundamental interactions, okay? The energy uh, travels from the sun to the surface of the earth and reflect, get reflected by um, objects on the ground. And then the reflected energy will be received by a remote sensor. And the reflected energy is a medium of information. We're going to analyze the reflected energy to get the information of the objects on the ground, objects who reflected the sun energy, okay? So initially, sun energy is radiated by at by atomic particles at the source. So here is the sun. That's the origin of the energy. And then the energy, the sun energy propagates through the vacuum of space at the speed of light. So here you can see the con uh, assumption here. We assume that the outer space is, is vacuum, not, in term, not only in terms of air, also in terms of anything that could um, hinder the propagation of light, which means that we consider that there is no loss when the light, when the energy is traveling through the outer space, okay? So the outer space is pure, is vacuum. There is nothing um, hindering the propagation of light. Then, then the energy, the sunlight, arrives at atmosphere of the Earth, and it will interact with the Earth's atmosphere because the content of Earth's atmosphere is very complex. There are different types of gases. There is also cloud, which is another form of water. There are other objects, for example, uh, aircraft, birds, and other things. So when the light, when energy is traveling through the atmosphere of Earth, it interacts with it. There is scattering, 
there is also reflection, or you can say reflecting. And after that, after this com different types of complex interactions, the energy, the sunlight interacts with the Earth's surface, okay? Okay, with the Earth's surface, or specifically with some objects on the surface of the Earth, they will reflect the energy. Before these objects reflecting some energy, the sound energy is meaningless because, I mean, it's meaningless to remote sensors because it doesn't have any information for, um, not for, it doesn't have any information on objects or of the objects on the ground. But when these objects, ref they reflect the sound energy, the reflected energy is useful to remote sensors now because the reflected energy has information of these objects. But before the reflected energy arrives at, remote, at a remote sensor, it will interact with the at Earth's atmosphere again, because it will have to go through it to arrive at the sensor. So there is also scattering and what? Reflecting or reflection. Okay, okay, and eventually and finally, the sound energy, um, the reflected sound energy reaches the remote sensor where it interacts with uh, various optical systems, filters, um, and detectors, and etc. and etc. So finally, the reflected energy is received by a sensor or by sensors, and it can be analyzed to retrieve the information of the object who reflected this energy. So this is a very typical energy flow of remote sensing, especially when we're talking about passive remote sensing, means that, uh, meaning that sun is energy source, okay? So you, you can also say that the, the, the traveling process, the traveling, um, of the energy is very complex, especially when it arrives at Earth's atmosphere, okay? For now, you don't have to memorize all those details. We're going to talk about them later in this course, okay? Okay, so this is, uh, uh, you can say, odyssey of energy, of sun energy, okay? And then let's talk about a little bit about wave theory, okay? Now here, we are not going to go deep, only basics, okay? And this is good enough for, for students majoring in GIS and remote sensing, okay? Because you're not uh, students majoring in physics, so you don't have to know more. What I'm going to tell you here is good enough, okay? So basic wave theory describes the EMR, electromagnetic energy or electromagnetic radiation, okay? Uh, as traveling in a harmonic sinusoidal fashion at the velocity of light, which is a constant here, okay? The distance from one wave peak, okay? Because this wave is sinusoidal, there are peaks. For example, here is a peak, here is another peak, here is the third peak, okay? so. The distance from one wave peak or crest to the next is the wavelength. So usually we use Greek letter lambda to address wavelengths of the light. And the unit is usually micrometer or nanometer, okay? One micrometer is 10 to the power of negative six meter. Nanometer, one nanometer equals one uh, uh, one nanometer equals to uh, equals um, a ten to the uh, minus nine, ten to the power of minus nine meter. Okay, and the number of peaks passing a fixed point in space per unit time is the wave frequency. Okay, okay, within a specific fixed time, how many waves were there? 
who passed a specific point. That's called frequency. Okay, so electromagnetic wave is transverse wave as the direction of the uh, oscillation is perpendicular to the direction of motion of the wave. For example, here, here is a figure showing you the, the propagation of electromagnetic wave. Okay, so here, this arrow here is indicating um, the direction of the propagation from left to right. But what's the direction of vibration of the wave? It's from bottom to top, okay? So the, the direction of vibration is vertical. And uh, the direction of the wave is horizontal. So they are perpendicular to each other. That's the reason why EMR is considered as transversive wave. Okay, so how about the relationship between uh, between uh, 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 between wavelengths and frequency? Here is the relationship, and this relationship is addressed by the speed of the light. So the speed of the light is considered uh, fixed or a constant. It is equal to three multiplied ten to the power of eight meters per second. Since this is a constant. And it is the multiplication of frequency V and wavelength lambda. So the relationship between these two variables is very clear. Frequency V is inversely proportional to wavelength lambda because their multiplication is a constant. It means that the longer the wavelength lambda, the lower the frequency V or the shorter the wavelength lambda, the higher the frequency V. Okay, so this is the relationship between frequency and wavelength. You just need to remember that the way, I mean, uh, the, 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 the light speed is constant and the light speed is the multiplication of V and lambda. So if one of them is becoming larger, another one needs to be smaller to make sure that their multiplication is still that constant, right? So frequency of a light wave in a medium is determined by its source and it's not affected by the medium, which means that um, the wavelengths cannot change by what? By medium. It is decided by its source. Okay, since wavelengths cannot be changed by medium, of course, frequency cannot be changed by the medium because like I mentioned before, their multiplication is a constant. If, if wavelengths cannot be changed by, by the medium, then of course, frequency will also stay the same, which means uh, the wavelengths or the frequency uh, is decided by light source. Okay, okay. Here um, is something called what? Electromagnetic spectrum. A spectrum is a widely defined word. It's a continuum of something. Here specifically, it's a continuum of what? Of wavelength, okay? Here, this gray bar here is wavelength in meters. Okay, it's a pretty big unit for, for wavelength. Okay, on the left side, we have um, electromagnetic radiation with very short wavelengths. On the right side, we have EMR with pretty long wavelengths. Okay, so from short wavelengths to long wavelengths, we can divide the whole spectrum into several sections. So, gamma rays. Okay, they're radioactive, radioactive, right? And then X-rays, then ultraviolet, then visible light. You can say visible light is only a very small part of the whole EMR spectrum. And uh, beyond that, we have uh, infrared and then radio waves. And you can say that um, some radio waves, they could have very long wavelengths, 10 to the power of eight meters. That's very long, that's very long. But 
radio waves, they are not our concerns in remote sensing because we don't use them. In remote sensing, we mostly use visible light and infrared as our energy, as our energy, okay? And if we zoom in to, to, to observe the visible light, this is what we're familiar with as human beings because our eye system, our eye system can only, what? can only address visible light. So visible light here uh, refers to uh, the EMR ranges from 400 nanometer to seven to around 700 nanometer. So um, 400, uh, 400 nanometer is for violet light or blue light. Then uh, 500 nanometer is somewhere between blue and green, okay? And the 600 meter is somewhere between yellow and red. And the pure red is around 700 nanometer as the wavelength of the light. So basically as, as a human being, we can only differentiate EMR from 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer or 0 0.4 micrometer to 0 0.7 micrometer. Okay, here I also um, note the relationship between meter, micrometer, and nanometer. Okay, so basically, like I mentioned, in remote sensing, we use visible light, we use infrared light although we cannot see them we use a little bit um, microwave microwaves uh, you can say it belongs to radio waves but it's very short extremely short radio waves and uh, microwaves they are for uh, active remote sensing okay active remote sensing okay so here is the first video for this lecture i will see you in the next video thank you